I am really excited how this turned out. An experiment gone right, and it all started yesterday. So you guys liked the experimental video we did last week, so thank you very much for watching that. So we're gonna continue a little bit on that. I'm going to be doing some recipe testing today because we've been craving to do a sweet dish at Mei Mei for quite a while now. I think the last one we did was a chendol, which was delicious. But I came across this trader in Bar Market, a new one called Hook and Son, who do raw milk and cream. And I thought that would be perfect to try and recipe test a Basque cheesecake. Now, I might be bastardizing the Basque cheesecake by adding my twist, of course, pandan in, but I know it's going to be delicious, but let's find out. Now, I heard that Basque cheesecake is near impossible to mess up because it doesn't have a biscuit base, it doesn't need to have a water bath, and you just bung it together and put it in the oven. Sounds simple, right? Well, let's find out. I got some cream cheese, and I'm going to use this raw cream, which I'm absolutely fascinated to find out how that's going to taste. Right, let's measure out the let's measure out the cream cheese. I'm going to you can get this in blocks, I believe, but we've got some soft spreadable stuff. But make sure you get full fat because obviously, plop, everything's better full flat. Flat? Everything's better full fat, especially in cooking. Cream's going in. We're gonna beat it for a couple of minutes. Just scrape down the sides just so that you're beating it evenly. And once it's all kind of together, we'll put in the sugar. Sugar in. Has anyone come across a uh, raw cream or dairy before? It says shape for you, so I probably should do that. It smells amazing. I think this stuff is, un I think he said it was unpasteurized, so I'm gonna have all that lovely goodness in. And I know it's from a good source because it's in Borough Market. Now I'm gonna flavor this cheesecake, my style, of course, with some pandan paste or essence. Um, I tried doing this with fresh pandan and it just didn't give me that sort of vibrant, real umptuous pandan flavour. So I'm going to use this pandan paste that I bought back from Singapore. It's going to give it that real vibrant green colour and a really, really strong pandan flavour, which I think is going to go perfectly with this Madagascan vanilla that I bought from the market as well. And you know it's going to be good vanilla when you can smell it through the plastic. <laughs> I'm gonna cut this open. I'm just gonna give it a squeeze right down to the bottom. I'll give it a little squeeze first and then slice it, open it up to get, basically you want those vanilla seeds inside and you scrape it and it's all come onto your knife. And then that's gonna go into our mix. Don't, whatever you do, get rid of these pods or discard them. Add those into like some sugar and you can add that to more baking or your tea, coffees. It's like having fancy sugar without having to pay extra for it. Did you know that vanillas came from an orchid? I'm just gonna add a touch of salt because salt and cream and in desserts is one of my favorite combinations. And let's whisk it all together. Now, I'm not whisking the cream, I'm just incorporating all those flavorings together. Look at that. Right, I'm gonna add in a little bit of this pat cream mixture into the cream cheese and stir it in, and then I'll add in the rest of it. Now, I haven't got this on a fast speed because I don't want to over whisk that cream. See all those little dots there? Those are vanilla seeds. every little bit in there. Next up, flour. Now it's not traditional to have flour in the recipe, but this will just help stabilize it because I don't want a super runny one. But also I don't want to make it too dry. So just a two tablespoons at max. And I actually infuse this pan, uh, flour with pandan by gently toasting it with some dry, in the dry pan with pandan. Next up, eggs in. Do one egg at a time to incorporate it slowly. It 
So I've got a 20 centimetre spring form cake tin, or eight inches, always a good size. And I'm going to line it with some parchment paper. And one thing I do love about this recipe is you don't need to be getting it precious, like line it preciously. You can just scramble it up and it's going to give you that rustic look. And again, no one's going to know that that took you two seconds and it's going to look awesome. So why am I recipe testing a cheesecake? Well, it's easy for my team who are cooking day in, day out the same dishes for me at May May. And I just kind of wanted to show them there's a whole world of exciting food and cooking and testing out there that we can also incorporate into our business, but also just get them really excited, inspired about cooking and food as much as I am. How easy is that? It's just plonk it into the pan. And it's gonna get a gentle knot. Get rid of any air bubbles. You can see there's one there. Give it a gentle smack on the bottom, just to get rid of the bu bubbles. There you go. And now that is just ready to go in the oven. This is gonna go in a preheated oven at 200 degrees centigrade, that's fan, fan assisted. So it had about 45 minutes in the oven and it didn't have enough color on the top. So I just gave it a gentle like color with the grill on. Uh, just for a couple of minutes, I didn't take my eyes off it because I knew it would go from nice and colored to burnt too burnt for my batter cheesecake. I had this wonderful wibble in the middle. Um, now that it's out of the oven, it's been sat, so I'm literally going to let it cool down completely before I take out the spring form um, cake tin. And then I'm gonna put it in the fridge to cool down even further, uncovered for a couple of hours until it's ready to cut. You can just serve it in the paper. It gives it that rustic bass feel and just reveal away your lovely cheesecake. Wow, I'm so excited to try this. Now in true Asian style, I'm gonna cut it with my cleaver. Wow, it's so soft. Look at that. No one's gonna expect a green cheesecake now, are they? I'm not entirely sure why I cut myself such a small piece, but I can't wait to tuck into that. It's got a lovely dark crusted top on there and it's set nicely. It's got that rustic look. I mean, that's exactly what Bass Cheesecake you're looking for. But you've got this fantastic green hue from the pandan. So I can't wait to tuck in. Mm. That is light as a feather. It's got that wonderful vanilla flavor, but as well you've got that sort of pandan coconutty flavor coming right through. You probably could make this with coconut milk instead of sort of dairy um, double cream, but I didn't want to bastardize the recipe too much into fusion, but I'm really, really happy with that. With some places with che Bass Cheesecake, you could serve it with like a compote or fruit compote, but I actually think this, this Bass Cheesecake is divine on its own. Maybe with a cheeky glass of sherry, but this is absolutely wonderful. I think it was so easy to put together. Like I say, it's impossible to get wrong. I'm really happy with this experimental take on the Bass Cheesecake. I highly recommend you give it a go. I'm going to give this maybe a couple more recipe tests. I'm gonna do a version that you can do in an air fryer because this is really, really simple to put together. I'm gonna to put all the details on the website on auntielizcooks.com details are in description and I hope you guys enjoyed this video this week. I certainly have and I can't wait to show this to the team if there's going to be any left actually. See you guys next week.